Okay, so those of you that have been around the channel for a little while will know that overall I'm not a huge fan of compressor pedals. There's a few reasons for this which I will explain in just a minute, but generally I never use a compressor on any of my pedal boards. Now this wasn't always the case. In fact, for years I owned and used compressors all the time. I had a JHS Pulp and Peel, I had a Strymon OB-1, but a few years ago I pretty much swore off compressors altogether. But one of my favorite pedal companies just released a new compressor, the Compadre from Strymon. Now I'm a big fan of Strymon and I have been for years. I've owned plenty of their pedals and they've been really great about supporting me and this YouTube channel. And they did give me the Compadre for free. They're not paying for this video in any other way other than giving me the pedal, but they didn't tell me what to say. In fact, they don't even know that I'm making this video. All these opinions that I share here are completely my own. Now I will admit, when I first heard Strymon was coming out with a new pedal, I got really excited. I thought, could this finally be the Strymon multi-effect or a bigger, badder version of the Iridium, a bigger amp modeler? And when I saw that it was a compressor and boost pedal, I was a little disappointed. Not because I don't think Strymon makes good stuff, it's just that, like I said, I'm not a compressor guy. But I had a thought. Maybe the past few years of my hatred for compressors is a little bit misguided. Maybe I should revisit the compressor and try and come at it from a different angle than the way I was using them before. They're incredibly popular. Plenty of guitar players use them. And in fact, they're so popular that I dedicated a portion of my tone course, which is available down below to compression and how compressor pedals work. But maybe it's time I gave the compressor pedal a second chance. Maybe I try to figure out if this is something that will actually end up in my rig. Will this end up on a pedal board? So in today's video, I'm gonna use the Compadre and a few other pedals to basically write a song, write a track. This is one of my favorite things to do here on this YouTube channel. And I think it's gonna be a good way to utilize this pedal in a few different ways to really see if this is something that I want to go back to or not. And hopefully in the process, educate you on some different ways to use compressors and what they're good for. Now, before we jump into Pro Tools and get to work, let's talk about the Compadre for a second. Now, this video is not gonna be a demo. I don't really do pedal demo videos. There's plenty of other places online that you can find that if you're interested. Instead, this is gonna be kind of an experiment. We're gonna put it through its paces and see how it does. Now, the Compadre has two main elements to it, a compressor and a boost slash overdrive. The compressor side has two settings, a studio and a squeeze setting. Basically, the studio setting is kind of like a normal studio rack compressor like I have in my sidecar behind me. It's going to be a little bit more subtle compression and something that is really more of a feel thing than an audible thing. Whereas the squeeze setting is going to be a little bit more like a traditional compressor pedal. You're going to have a much lower compression threshold. It's going to give you more of that pumping sort of squishy sound. But down here we have two more controls for the compressor, dry and level. Dry just lets you blend in your guitar's dry signal, which is a really great feature, and level, which lets you control the amount of makeup gain, because when you're compressing, oftentimes you are lowering the gain, you're lowering the dynamic response of your guitar signal, so you can bring that back with the level control. You could also use this as a boost on its own. Then over here, we have the boost section and we basically have three different EQ options with the boost. You have flat, middle and treble, basically giving you three different sounds. And then on the front, we have boost type. You can switch between clean and dirty. So clean boost being straight ahead, clean boost and dirty being more of a soft clipping overdrive sound. So on paper, this thing looks like a pretty versatile pedal. Let's plug it up, get some sounds going and see if we can't record something cool. Okay, so here's the signal chain I've got set up over here on the desk, starting with the Compadre, then from there going into the Black Box Overdrive 2 from Snouse Electronics and then into the Collider Delay and Reverb from Source Audio. Out of the delay reverb combo, we're going into a Morgan AC20 Deluxe head and then into a Universal Audio Aux. 
So with this rig, I think I'll be able to cover all of the different sounds I want for the track that I have in mind. If I decide I want to throw something else in, I'll let you know. But uh, let's pull up a drum sound and start to lay down a preliminary scratch guitar track. Okay, so I've got a basic drum groove laid out. I kind of have an idea of what I want to do. And I'm going to start by laying down a scratch guitar part. I've got the baritone pulled out today. I haven't seen this in a little while on the channel. And I have this sort of riff idea or chordal part idea that I've been messing around with for quite some time. And I think I want to finally put it into a song. It's this kind of thing. The compadre is set up for a very subtle compression. It's really just there to kind of even my picking dynamics out. And for a part like this, a subtle compression works pretty well. Here it is without the compadre. And with the compadre. So you can tell it's really subtle. There's not really much happening at all, but it's just enough that I can feel it evening out my picking dynamic. So I'm going to lay down this scratch guitar part for the intro, and then we're going to start building stuff on top of that. <laughs> So now the scratch guitar is done, we're gonna lay down some bass. I've got this going DI through my Zod Audio Tube DI over there. And then I'm actually running from the DI into the Strymon Deco. I made a video on the Deco a few weeks ago, which you can check out here, why it's one of my favorite pedals that nobody ever really talks about. So essentially what I'm using this Deco for is a little bit of tape saturation and some chorusing. If you listen, there is a little bit of chorus going on. Now, in the context of the mix, you're not necessarily gonna hear that chorus effect on the bass, but it's gonna give the bass some width. So I'm gonna go ahead and track it on the way in. I'm committing to that sound. I'm not gonna really mess with the bass tone in post other than maybe a little compression and EQ in the final mix. And I'm gonna keep this bass part relatively simple, just roots, fifths, and octaves, and hopefully it works. So I guess I should take a second and explain why I don't like compressor pedals. It's not compression itself. I actually love compression. I use it all the time. In fact, pretty much every track on this song so far has some form of compression on it. And in fact, whenever you're using any type of overdrive or hard clipping effect like distortion or fuzz, soft clipping like natural amp overdrive or an overdrive pedal, you're actually using a form of compression. So if it's not compression itself that bothers me, then what is it? I think it's the way that most players use compressor pedals, and I'm including myself in this category, at least the way that I used to run compressor pedals, as an always-on effect. When I had the Pulp and Peel from JHS and then the OB-1, the predecessor to the Compadre, I would use it as an always on thing because it made me feel better when I was playing it. I could get away with not playing as cleanly or deliberately as I needed to in order to get a great sound. The compressor sort of acted like a fixer. It was doing its job. It was smoothing out the dynamics and making everything nice and even. But there's a problem with that. And that problem is that it eliminates the ability for you to have touch dynamics or dynamic control over your tone. So I always like to run my guitar amps at edge of breakup tone. So right now, this Morgan AC20 is set pretty much for an edge of breakup tone, meaning if I play lightly, the amp will stay clean. And if I dig in, the amp will get dirty. Now, 
Now, the reason I like that is because it gives me an extra element of control over my sound. It gives me another element of expression that I wouldn't normally have if the amp was set completely clean or completely dirty. But if you have a compressor on, it's evening everything out. Whoa, got some microphonics going on here. So right now I've got the compadre set up in the squeeze setting as a pretty extreme example of this. You should notice that no matter how hard I play, my tone effectively stays the same. That's really digging in and here's a lot lighter. There's not that much difference in the tone and the amp's response because I have the compressor on. Now this is the reason that I quit using compressors several years ago. I realized that for me, it was a crutch. I was using it to cover up some areas of my playing that I was lacking in, but Compressors aren't all bad. In fact, there's a lot of really good things you can do with them. Like that first track with the baritone, just sort of evening everything out and helping that part step forward in the mix. You can also use them to get a little bit more sustain. So I'm gonna lay down another guitar part here, maybe with a slide. I'm gonna dial the compressor in to give me more sustain, help those notes ring out a little longer than they would naturally without the compressor on. Okay, so I've switched to this guitar. This is a Revolta standard scale length guitar, but it's got baritone strings on it. So it's got a different tone and a slightly different tuning than the baritone I was using earlier. And I'm gonna use this to double up some of the picking parts that I just laid down with the Black Falcon. I think having this really juicy low tuning is gonna really help fill out some of the low mid range I think is missing from the guitar parts right now. And this thing just sounds like. So that's the compadre. I think this has opened me up to uh, wanting to get back into using compressor pedals more often. I actually found it pretty useful over the course of writing and recording this track. Overall, I gotta say, I think Shryman did a good job with this pedal. I like having the boost with the three different EQ bands and the fact that you can basically turn it into an overdrive. 
and that would potentially eliminate the need for another overdrive on your board. So you could kind of think of this as two pedals in one. But I think the thing to keep in mind here is compression, just like anything else, is a tool for a job. And you wouldn't want to use the same tool all the time for every single job. Now, if you're one of those players out there that likes an always on compressor and that's part of your sound and that's what makes you happy and inspires you to play, then by all means. But I would encourage you to try something different. I would encourage you to turn the compressor off and only use it for the select few times when it's gonna add something to your tone or add something to the part that you might be playing. Try to keep it from becoming a crutch like it was for me for a long time. Learn to play without it. Let me know what you think about the compadre and compressor pedals in general. Are you an always on compressor player or are you not? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you're interested in learning about guitar tone and my thought process and approach to getting great guitar tone, I have a video course that I just released called the Tone Course available down below. It's a whole course dedicated to the fundamentals of great guitar tone. So check that out if you're interested. You can also find links down there to support the channel. There are affiliate links as well as links to the green room if you want to sign up for that. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Rhett Shull. Subscribe here to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm Rhett Shull, and remember there is no plan B.